and we are back. This time we are back with May 7th, 1994 for John II here on the channel. A show that could only be known as the Tweezer Fest, probably the Tweezer Fest. You know, something they've done multiple times over their careers, but this is probably the one. It's an official Live Fish release. It was an early official Live Fish release. Way back when they were doing the volume series that we just touched on there at the Sphere. And it was, um, it did have a first set, believe it or not. You know, I know the first set is not really what gets talked about. It was very good. It was very 1994. Not a lot of improvising. Started out on a high note, ended on a high note. Um, you did have the rare Split Open and Melt and Sin of a Mule in the first set. And uh, back in the days of labeling CDs, things could have got quite confusing. I don't know why we didn't just write Meld and Mule. But we all wanted to write S-O-A-M. You had that back-to-back. -back. That was troublesome. So you had to do something to separate the two. Which one's Mule? Which one's Melt? I don't know. Why didn't we just write Melt and Mule? I'm sure you probably did. I didn't. Me and my friends, we wrote S-O-A-M. So it got out of control when they played them both in the first set. And then a nice divided sky in there, mound. Almost every song was good, too. I'm a sucker for a mound. A very well-played horn, as opposed to the 2000 version that I just heard, which was not so well-played. And then a llama starting things, Susie ending things. So really a very good hour, a little over an hour-long first set, too. You know, if you're just wanting to rock and roll, hit the gym or something, this is a good set. But it's really the set that's forgotten and not talked about. And then the second set, shockingly, opens up with a loving cup before we get into the already spoken about Tweezer Fest. And then if just the first Tweezer alone would have been it for the night. Like they played that first set, they come out, they play this Tweezer. I mean, it was 1994, so big monster improvised jams were not quite the thing yet. You know, not that this was the first one ever, but um, this was probably blowing people's minds back then for sure. And um, it just had multiple layers. It hits this point. There's like a mind left body jam throughout part of the tweezer. At certain points, every guy has their moment, whether if it's Fishman and Mike or Trey and Paige or just Trey, just Paige. And then we get it that just the smooth, perfect transition into Sparks. And every time they left Tweezer, it would go into a cover. This time it was the Who's Sparks, the instrumental. It just seemed like a song made for John Fishman. Obviously, a guy who's just got the uh, <clears throat> got the powerful chops, as I, I guess you would say, as Keith Moon did in The Who, so it makes sense. Then we get a quick trip into Maki Supa. And then the next Tweezer was not so obvious that we were going into Tweezer. It kind of evolves into a Sweet Emotion Jam. In fact, I believe on .NET, they don't even have it listed as a Tweezer. On the Live Fish app, though, it's officially a Tweezer, and this was the Tweezer Fest. So not very obvious and not very recognizable as the tweezer. And then um, the Sweet Emotion Jam leads us into a walk away. The walk away had like, it feels like a, maybe like an It's Ice moment. And then, you know, it's funny. When I hear Santos, I hear walk away. But when I hear walk away, I do not hear Santos. But I did hear It's Ice. And then, uh, then they go, they jack back into another after the, um, another trip into tweezer. Then we get into uh, Cannonball, you know, Kim Deal, Dayton's own Kim Deal and Cannonball kind of a um a nice little surprise there not that it was a surprise you know in 2024 but uh anytime i can mention a daytonian and kim deal i'm happy to do that and then they kind of still weren't done you think all right now we're gonna relax and we're gonna get goofy with a purple rain here but then the purple rain kind of le leads over into hold your head up because you know fishman absolutely loves that song Trey loves playing it on drums, apparently, and then they really go to town on Hold Your Head Up, man. I mean, it was just energy from beginning to end, man. They were ready to go. I don't know, maybe that Loving Cup first set, a second set opener. Maybe they need to do that more often, open up with a Loving Cup. And then, yeah, you know, a sample in a jar, Amazing Grace, Encore. You know, the first set and the Encores really weren't it. Really, it was just all of the madness in the second set, and it just never really let up, man. Just when you, like, Maki Supa Police, man, I guess, was a little bit of a rest. Uh, Purple Rain, I suppose, again, but then, you know, they went from just like, let's get wild and crazy to let's be silly and funny, and it's still all very cool. So, it definitely has been, while my favorite shows always change, you know, this one probably consistently would be in one of my ten favorite shows of all time, and probably will forever stay that way. The Bomb Factory, an appropriate name down in Dallas, Texas, for this show. You know, Trey, Texan. Had to get it done in his home state. All right, guys, boom, we are out of here. John 2, thanks for this one. We've had a lot of classic recaps this month, whether if it was New Year's 95, some cool 97 shows. So, you know, it seems like early on in this member thing, we were doing a lot of people's first shows, a lot of people's favorite shows. And now we are moving on to classic shows. So it's been a lot of fun, you know. Every time I think maybe this is going to be like, oh, no, i got to do another fish show. 
it's another awesome fish show from the 90s so boom we'll see you guys soon and um it's already hot out here boop, 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 that was page